Well, let's start our very quick review of chapter 9 with 9.2, and that's translations. And that is simply sliding a figure, in this case, on the coordinate plane. And again, in this case, it is, of course, a uh, quadrilateral. And the notation, as you all remember, the prime notation, that is the image. This one, the red one's the image, the blue is the pre-image. X and Y. Um, in the polygon matrix, the top row is the X, the bottom row is the Y. It's always going to be that way. What you got to watch for here, this is the coordinate rule. That's pretty obvious. When you use matrices, you're going to be adding matrices whenever you are sliding the figure. And that polygon or translation matrix, all the, um, let's say, the top row is going to be the same number, the bottom row will be the same number. Always, always, always. That's all there is to it. Now let's look at reflections. In section 9.3, we dealt with reflections. Make sure you've got all of these in your notes. You've got four different sets of coordinate rules, and you have four different matrices, transformation matrices here. And, um, well, again, it looks a lot like this. Remember, that's reflecting over the x-axis. There's your coordinate rule, and this is your matrix. And you remember reflecting over the y? goes this way. That's your coordinate rule. This is your matrix. And y equals x, you all know, is that 45 degree line passing through. Well, think of it. It's got a slope of 1, passes through the origin. And right there, the point will end up over there. AB maps to BA. This is your translation matrix. This one and this one, mind you, are not in the textbook. So make sure you get it down here. Now, finally, um, y equals the opposite of x, or negative x. That's the green line there. And my reflected point goes all the way over there. And that's my rule. This is my matrix. Make sure you've got this all written down, ready for the test. So the biggest thing to have straight is that these are rotations. Make sure you know the difference between these and your reflections that we just went over. Here we go for 90. I'm going to take this, and remember we visualized it this way, 2, 5, negative 5, 2. Now, there it is in matrix, if I'm going to use that as a translation matrix. There's my 180, there's my coordinate rule, there's my matrix. My 270 comes all the way around to here, my coordinate rule, my matrix. Now I threw in there the um, uh, 360. A trivial case because you'll probably never see it, but just to be consistent, um, it's just going to map onto itself. But you should have all these written down. Know the difference between these and your rotations. Now let's look at composite. Well, in section 9.5, we learned about composite transformations. Let's have a look at that. We'll take this blue triangle and we'll reflect it in the x-axis, like our red instructions here. Then we'll take that red image and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees about the origin. Nothing to it. Now, something you want to consider, let's reverse those two. I'm going to reverse this and I'm now going to take this, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'll make it magenta now. Then I'll take that image and reflect it, now I'll reflect it over the x-axis, ends up there. Well, the moral of the story is the order matters. I do this in this order, and now in the other order. So make sure you're aware the order matters in the composite transformations. And in section 9.6, we explored rotational symmetry and lines of symmetry. And let's just well, give a little illustration here. We have this equiangular, but not equilateral, hexagon here. And I'm going to say that the red and the blue are both axes of symmetry. They would reflect, the image would reflect to, onto itself from either of those. But you can see this figure also has 180 degrees of rotational symmetry. Recall, if the two axes are 90 degrees apart, 2 times 90 is 180 and hence this 180 degrees of rotational symmetry. 
pretty neat. Uh, something else, we uh, I'm going to change this polygon. I want to bring it more in line this way. Suppose I did that and made it regular as well. And now all of a sudden, I've got six axes of symmetry in this regular hexagon. And I can see right there. Oh, and by the way, that results in 60 degrees, 120, 180, 240, and 300 degrees of rotational symmetry. And finally, we concluded our chapter with 9-7 dilations. In this particular case, you can see that the image is bigger than the pre-image. We're dilating about the origin, and you can see this, therefore, is an enlargement because this is scalar multiplication. This scale factor happens to be 2. Here it's performed with matrices, and there I've got my image matrix. And um, had this number been less than 1, I would have gotten a reduction. So uh, that concludes our review. Uh, by no means comprehensive, but it hits the main points, so make sure you're ready for that test. Good luck.